Super. Good. Good morning. Um, just wanted to sort of back a little bit of context. A little bit of context for uh, for this meeting and some of the meetings that have gone before it. Uh, this is planned by our genomic medicine working group, which is a, a working group of our advisory council. Their job is to assist in advising us on research needed to evaluate and implement genomic medicine uh, by reviewing current progress, identifying research gaps and approaches for filling them, uh, identifying and publicizing key advances and accomplishments in genomic medicine, planning these meetings on timely themes, uh, facilitating collaborations and exploring models for sort of long-term infrastructure and sustainability. Uh, this is the group. We are missing a few of our members. Uh, Carol Bolt from uh, Jackson Labs was unable to join us. Um, Mary Railing, I thought, was going to. Cecilia, is Mary coming? Or Yeah. Is she here? No? Okay. Um, so there must be trouble in Memphis as well. Um, and, uh, and I think we had, oh, and Gail Jarvik uh, had, a, had a conflict and couldn't, couldn't join us. So. And Jeff Ginsburg uh, also had a conflict and couldn't join us. So um, just to, to let you know, on our website there is a, um, a site or a, or a link called Accomplishments in Genomic Medicine. These are reviewed by the Genomic Medicine Working Group every month. Uh, we, we pull out papers that we think are sort of key scientific advances, and they're useful to us when people say, what has genomic medicine done for us lately, um, and maybe of, of some use to you as well. So they're broken down into things like clinical implementation, disease sequencing, et cetera, and then we um, uh, cite specific papers, some of which may look familiar and timely um, for this meeting. These meeting, this is the 12th of these meetings. The first one actually was held in uh, 2011 uh, at uh, O'Hare Airport. We just basically um, identified everybody that we knew who was doing something related to genomic medicine and asked them to come on their own dime, um, and they came, which was fabulous. Um, and from that, then, we, uh, we sort of uh, wrote out a kind of a roadmap for people trying to implement uh, genomics in medical care. Our second meeting was on forming collaborations. Uh, the third was on stakeholders, uh, key stakeholders. Uh, the fourth fourth in physician education, um, then one on federal strategies, on global leaders in genomic medicine, genomic uh, clinical decision support. Um, uh, it's kind of an overview of our genomic medicine programs for the eighth one. Uh, a nice meeting on, on sort of bedside back to bench, linking up laboratory and, and uh, scientists and clinicians. A tenth one on pharmacogenomics. Our, our most recent one uh, in last September was on clinical implementation, and then we have this one on risk. Um, just some outgrowths of these meetings so that you know that you're, you're not coming to Silver Spring in vain. Um, from the very first meeting, we, had, we followed that up with a meeting called ClinAction that was looking at how do we interpret variants, how do we sort of look at actionability and kind of the, you know, the onion peel of uh, things that are actionable and things that are uh, clinically valid. This led to the clinical genome uh, resource or ClinGen. Uh, from that, there have been several outgrowths. There's a, a, a now ClinGen is recognized by the FDA as part of its Precision FDA uh, database. And uh, Genome Connect is an effort to uh, have patients uh, distribute or, or uh, uh, deposit their genome sequences themselves. Uh, we also uh, implemented a pharmacogenomic um, uh, component in eMERGE. Our second uh, meeting led to the IGNITE implementation, implementing genomics in uh, practice um, uh, network. Um, and Mark and Dan are going to sit here and distract me. Um, so we, had, we also, out of that group. You're the one that sat us next to each other. <laughs> I know. That was a mistake, wasn't it? Um, so uh, a payers meeting um, with insurers, and that kind of led to a bit of a brick wall, um, which we're still trying to penetrate. We have a little bit of daylight there that I'll tell you about in a moment. Um, the fourth meeting on education led to our Inter Society Coordinating Committee. This is a group of nearly 100 uh, different societies. Those are all their logos up there. Um, that are participating in, in uh, uh, facilitating pr practitioner education in genomics. Uh, our fifth meeting uh, led to some collaborations with Centers for Medicare and, and Medicaid Services that are still ongoing. Um, the uh, Global Genomic Medicine Collaborative grew out of our sixth meeting with global leaders. This is an effort worldwide to bring together people who are implementing genomics and care. Uh, we almost uh, immediately after that had a meeting on Stevens Johnson uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis, uh, which was something that was being implemented quite effectively in Southeast Asia. And and then uh, from that put out a, uh, a solicitation for um, serious uh, adverse drug reaction research. Um, this has also led to an, an effort in, um, uh, in, in um 
uh, bringing uh, international cohorts together, very large cohorts uh, called the International 100,000 uh, Plus Cohorts Consortium, or IHCC, uh, that just had its second summit uh, just a, a week or two ago. Uh, the seventh meeting uh, led to a collaboration with the National um, Academies of Medicine and Science on the Digitized Consortium in uh, uh, Genomic Clinical Decision Support. Uh, our eighth meeting led to a collaboration with Health Education England and Genomics uh, uh, England. Um, in our ninth meeting, uh, the, the basic science one um, uh, led to a solicitation for variance function and disease. Uh, the tenth meeting um, uh, led to a collaboration with Optum and uh, uh, its parent organization, United Healthcare, uh, which is now actually uh, implementing an, an approach of using GTR codes for um, coding genetic testing rather than using the 200 CPT codes that are terrible at, at trying to capture all of the genetic tests that are done, and instead the, the GTR with its 70,000 tests is a much more nimble and effective way of, uh, of coding this, which we, we hope that they will roll, roll out more broadly uh, very soon. Uh, our 11th meeting um, led to a, a collaboration with employers, actually. So it turns out employers are actually the payers for most of us when it comes to our health insurance. Uh, they are quite interested in working with us in identifying uh, what may be appropriate to, uh, to pay for and to offer to their employees. And that brings us to GM12. So here we are. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Dan. Yeah, boy, when I saw those slides, I thought it would take half an hour to sh present them, Terry. That was uh, fast. Are there, are, are, are there any questions? Somebody want to know what all those acronyms stand for? Um, <laughs> so uh, Terry and I decided I should say three words about why we're here. Uh, my view, there are two reasons, I think. One is uh, the polygenic risk scores, which have been around for a while, and uh, are a way, I think, of capturing the sort of complex genetic architecture of many diseases. Uh, appear to get appear to have gotten a set of sort of new legs because of uh, large data sets and uh, and our ability to analyze phenomic outcomes. So that's one reason for excitement. And the other, at least in my view, is that we're at a point in genomic medicine where we are starting to be able to identify patients who are somehow different from average, and therefore might need different kinds of care uh, in prevention or in treatment. So the, the overall themes are uh, finding people who are different, uh, but uh, with a focus on polygenic risk scores. And I think that's all I, I wanted to say. I could inflict slides on you, but I decided not to. Um, if we're... Uh, Great. I'm taking notes. All right. We're, we'll go into then our first session. Uh, if there are no questions or comments, there seem to be, um, on risk prediction with and without genomics. Um, we thought we would start off with the, uh, the grandparents of, uh, of risk prediction in the Framingham Heart Study. So, Adrian, please. Oh, and you need, you'll need this. <laughs> 